and all you see, you're just in prison. Your world of bitterness then becomes the basement that you live in. And everywhere you look, you all you do is see the walls of bitterness. It imprisons you because even on a sunny day, you're trapped in the basement and you don't see the sun. And you're, you're just not... You're just not seeing the goodness of God in your life because you are, you are completely consumed with the blessings of others are greater than mine. Their trouble is easier than mine, and I've just put myself on an island. Hello and welcome back to the No Greater Joy podcast brought to you by Grace Baptist Church in Westlake, Ohio. Here at Grace Baptist Church, we want for our people what Jesus wants for his people, and that is to know greater joy. With me, I've got... Steve Strong, lead pastor. Ryan Atkins, associate pastor. And our tech guru, Dan Craniac. Thanks, Dan. And I'm your host, George Haas. So on the podcast, we've been discussing suffering for a couple episodes now. And we've been using a book by Paul Tripp entitled Suffering, Gospel Hope When Life Doesn't Make Sense. And we've been referencing this book because in it he talks about several traps that people can fall into in the midst of suffering that sort of exacerbates it. And yeah, we bring trouble unwelcome to burdens. That's yeah. right. Trouble to our trouble. So we've talked about the awareness trap, the fear trap, and today we're going to be talking about the envy trap. So, Ryan, do you want to give for the listeners, what is the envy trap? So, I think the envy trap, as he kind of describes it, is just this embitterment towards others, like this envy that we're looking horizontally. We start making comparisons to those around us. Um, We see their trials or their suffering as easier than our own. Uh, We see their blessings as greater than our own. Um, And so that just leads us down a path of uh, kind of with all these traps, just a diminishing view of who God is uh, because now we're focused on, well, I'm comparing my my situation to Dan's situation or to your situation (laughs) versus just looking at my situation in relationship to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've heard the quote. I think it was, comparison is the thief of joy. You guys Mm -hmm. heard that? Yep. Mm-hmm. I've never, never heard of that. George, <laughs> I don't know where you got that. Well, no, I'm going right. to say right, my quote there you go. from this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so it Totally this original. This comparison <laughs> and this horizontal view, Steve, yeah. is that really what's at the heart of the envy trap? I think so. I, you know, I like what Tripp, he describes it as being spiritual accountants. And <laughs> so if we have accountants out there, I know we do. If you're a numbers person, um, the this envy trap, probably begins with kind of calculating, you know, your return on your investment or your return on your faith investment. Mm. And you're always asking the question, is it worth it? But you're answering that question with a purely horizontal Mm -hmm. view rather than a vertical view or an eternal view, which will, will... We're going to end up landing that direction. But for now, though, this key idea with this trap, closing in on your leg, troubling your trouble, is when you are in the midst of difficulty. And it's inevitable, I think, for us when we're trying to be faithful, we're trying to do the right thing, and the trouble storm blows in. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to ask ourselves, is it worth it? You know, and we're doing that spiritual accounting, adding up everything, and is it worth it? And and the point with this trap is that you will never know that just by comparing your lives to others. Um, that's the trap. So, Ryan, what what is the actual danger in the NB trap? Like. You're going through suffering. You look at other people and you say, well, they've got it better than me. I guess what's what's the danger in the spiritual sense with that envy? Well, I think it it can begins to consume you. Like we were talking about with, with the fear trap, like this hyper-awareness and fear of a situation 
and all the like it shrinks got out i think with this one it starts to consume your thoughts and actually lead you like from being bitter to being angry whether it's anger with uh, another individual or anger with god um or towards god like i think ultimately it just suffer like our relationships are going to suffer when we allow this trap to rise up within us and and linger um and so i think it's like that's the like the spiritual danger of it is the suffering of relationships because of what's going on in your own head and heart um and not recognizing what's happening like that lack of awareness to it and like it's kind of feeding on itself like the more you think about it the more bitter you get the more bitter you get the more angry you get the more angry you get the more you think about it that like it just Mm -hmm. cycles and cycles and cycles so envy never stays as just envy well no and i you're making and and, you know you're doing bad math i think some of the dangers with this is one you're gonna end up looking at your trouble as the the sum of your spiritual walk you know so apparently this and this you know doing what's right following faithfully trusting Mm -hmm. is equaling trouble that's bad math that's bad spiritual math that my faith and obedience gets paid with no trouble Mm -hmm. but if my faith and obedience gets paid with trouble that like your trouble is not the sum of, of walking with the Lord. Um, and there's an interaction in John. John records this at the end of his gospel. And I think Jesus kind of preserves Peter from the envy trap. Um, Jesus meets with Peter there on the, the, the shore of Galilee and has that conversation with him, you know, do you love me, do you love me, do you love me, basically he's restoring him, and but he's also restoring him to his task as an apostle to go feed my sheep, you know, to continue on, and we see him doing that in the book of Acts. But right after that, do you love me conversation, Peter's walking with Jesus, and John is nearby, um... And Peter says to Jesus, what about them? (laughs) What about John? What about that man? And Jesus, his response is, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like Jesus, it's like he sees the, he sees the adversary even after this great restoration and, um, you know, he's telling him, you know, listen, Peter, you're going to end up dying for me. And Peter's like, well, what about that guy? It's like, it's like Jesus can see the spiritual envy trap about to close around Peter's legs. And he's like, pulling it back down and saying, no, 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 no. And he's like, Peter, you know, don't look horizontally. Don't look at John. His path is not your path, you know? And so the trial of others when we're when we're finding ourselves getting caught, we are purely looking horizontal, and inevitably, I'm going to look at your trial, and your trial is going to be easier than mine, and your blessings are going to be greater than mine. And so, what does that do? It just doesn't stay there. It always becomes anger, and wrath, and bitterness. And so, um, yeah. So kind of rabbit trail and wander there a little bit but i i think we're trying to hit at what Mm -hmm. like the danger of the fear of this envy trap so i there's one other component to this i want to ask if you guys would agree with this the horizontal looking to is not i would say towards just those around me but could also be to like my own past and the the example that came to mind was in exodus when you have these israelites in the wilderness and you have some who want to go back like they envied their position as slaves, the bondage they were in is knowing their previous situation versus what God has promised before them. And so it wasn't necessarily just them comparing themselves to those around and like their blessings are greater than my blessings. Their curses are less than my curses, but actually envying 
and desiring to go back to what once was. And that then leads them to an anger and ultimately judgment. Would you guys agree, like, as part of this envy trap, that that could be a piece of it where it's not necessarily uh, me, Ryan, comparing my situation to you, Steve, but me, Ryan, today, comparing myself to Ryan's situation five years ago and envying and not seeing where God has brought you, but envying where you were? Would you guys maybe I'm like way off in left field or not even in the baseball field. I don't know. <laughs> it was just a thought as I was getting ready for this. Like you have this idea of like gratitude getting replaced with complaint with envy. Well, I, th- I, I think probably for trip, he's focused on others, but what you bring up, I think is in it. I think it does factor into or get expressed can be expressed in this envy sense because you're still answering the question. Is it worth it? Mm hmm. And so their trouble, now they've troubled their trouble in the wilderness right. with disobedience and complaining and everything, um, but they troubled their trouble by answering the question, is this worth it, with no. Mm-hmm. And so they were make they were doing bad spiritual math. They're like, we should follow, it should be easy. Right. And an easy life as a payment for our obedience. Um, and now there's giants in the land. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not worth it. And what do we see them doing? Getting bitter Mm -hmm. and getting angry. Um, and, uh, you know, trip, I think it does brings out an amazing illustration is like when that envy turns into anger. And I think we see that play out. And you were going to ask us the examples. I think one of those great, to kind of jump ahead to that, is um, you see the polygamy in Abraham's family between his wives, Jacob's wives. Uh, there is, there's especially Jacob's between Rachel and uh, Leah. There's, uh, Rachel is envious of Leah, seeing the blessings. Mm-hmm. And, um, and even Sarah and Hagar with Abraham, like there's 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 envy that doesn't stay envy. It becomes anger, and there's just bitterness. And these wives in the envy are trapped in. And Paul in Trip talks about the basement of bitterness, and all you see, you're just in prison. Your world bitterness then becomes the basement that you live in. And everywhere you look, you all you do is see the walls of bitterness. It imprisons you because even on a sunny day, you're trapped in the basement and you don't see the sun. And you're, you're just not you're, you're just not seeing the goodness of God in your life because you are, you are completely consumed with the blessings of others are greater than mine. Their trouble is easier than mine. And I've just put myself on an island, and um, yeah, yeah. the The envy one is one where scriptures just replete with examples of it. I mean, it goes back to uh, Genesis with with Cain and Abel. Uh, we see that Esau envied Jacob for for Isaac's blessing. Mm-hmm. Saul and David. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in Mark, the it says in 1510 that the Jewish leaders envied Jesus and that's why they arrested him. Yeah. And the, and the anger stems from I deserve. Yes. Okay. And I think that's an important thing to bring out. I deserve, it shouldn't be this way. I deserve whether it's, I deserve the promised land, whether it's, I deserve the children. I deserve, I deserve Ang- a- envy be envies, recognizing writing the bad math. And then, so you don't have the, the sum the way you want it to be and you look at others and they have the blessing that I deserve. They have a hardship that's less than mine. And so then that's where that seed of anger and when envy turns into anger and seeded the anger's taken the seat and taken root, then we become that bitterness and we've just shaped our view mm. of other people. And I like you know, envy has never lightened the load of mm-hmm. any sufferer. Envy just continues to pile on the load. Um, 
So deserved the deserved. D word. I know. I know Ryan <laughs> hates the D word. <laughs> I was I was already like, man, the dreaded D word. Well, you I, think about I deserve, commercials. I deserve. I deserve. Actually, every, you deserve. Every advertisement. You deserve. That's right. You deserve. 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 Right? deserve. So what are they fostering? Envy. Yeah, well, I hate the D so. word. The long D word. <laughs> <laughs> and as sinners, what we actually deserve is not what we want. Yeah. No, no, no. And I think that's a good point. The fact that you say that because envy, when you're in that basement of envy, anger, bitterness, you are not, you're totally underestimating the goodness of God yes. and his presence. Because in every moment of trouble and difficulty, the steadfast love of the Lord remains forever. Mm-hmm. You know, even the psalmist, Psalm 73, where he's like, I'm looking out at the wickedness of the world. And he doesn't get it. He's and he says he's envious of the wicked. <laughs> and he's like, I oh, like I was one step away from betraying the next generation by teaching a truth that is rooted in enviness, envy. Um, then he's like, when I went into the house of God, okay, I saw the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's completely um, underestimating. The fact that even in your trouble, you can still see the goodness of God. You know, you're, you're, one, you're writing that bad spiritual math is that my trouble is not the sum of my faith. Okay. So it's not something like I've, I've deserved this or I don't deserve this. Um, and, and you're underestimating the goodness of God. And all you got to do is look outside and recognize, wow, I don't deserve any goodness because i am a depraved sinner mm-hmm. um anyway i don't know if you want to no you was, did, what you said that just kind of yeah was, no that's triggered some thoughts so we've talked about looking horizontally and we've talked in a couple of the other episodes too of like looking vertically and that includes meditating on god and i can sort of see that i don't know realization of I'm a sinner. I don't deserve any goodness. That's sort of like an aspect of looking vertically, maybe. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about meditating on God, again, what, what does that look like? Because I really want people to understand what, what does it mean to meditate on God? I think it's, in its simplest, it's remembering those promises, right? Like you are talking about the, psalm, the psalmist with every other line of everything like he God has done for his steadfast love endures forever. This happened for his steadfast love. Like that just repetition of promise and just who God is. Um, like that should be what consumes our thoughts, right? Not what I deserve, but what he has blessed me with like the breath in my lungs. I didn't deserve that. Right, like I'm a sinner. I woke up a sinner this morning. Luckily, I have a savior. Right, by God's grace, I have a savior. Um, however, like there's nothing I deserve. There's only what's been given as a gift. Um, and I think meditating on that truth and keeping that at the forefront of your mind, I think, just changes changes the mindset from "Well, I deserve X" to "Wow, I'm blessed by God to have Y." Not Y, W-H-Y, but just the next letter in the alphabet, Y. Mm-hmm. Yeah, meditating, you know, in your new age kind of meditating is about clearing your mind. Yeah. I would um. say, yeah, I would say meditating within scripture is, and maybe this is <coughs> illustrated in scripture, but I've always heard it, it's like chewing the cut of scripture. What a cow <laughs> does is it's just, you know, eats its grass, and if this is gross, whatever, but I think it illustrates it, <laughs> you know, eats the grass, chews it up, swallows it, goes into stomach one, but then he regurgitates it, right? And it becomes cud. And what does he do? He keeps chewing and chewing and chewing, swallows it, goes into stomach two, it's um, digesting it, comes back up, chews it more, goes into, they have three stomachs or whatever. I think four. Is it four? four? Four stomachs. So they do that four times. It's like, all right. So in my scripture reading this morning, it's in Psalm, uh, I forget which one it was, 106, 10 something. It's give thanks to the Lord for he is good. It's like, just take, let's just 
and and this is unfortunately a sign of our times is we just don't take time to stop and to be quiet and to just focus our thoughts on something like that and to meditate on God is to be take give thanks to the Lord for he is good mm-hmm. and just to stop and think of that to chew the cut of that verse well what in my life should I give thanks for what how have I seen his goodness how do I and just to stop and to rehearse and think about that and ask questions about that and to answer those questions in my mind and and to spend time rehearsing that over and over and over how do I see this what does this mean what ways is he and you're just you're meditating. I mean, that I think that's that idea of meditating, chewing the cut of, um, of scripture and who God is, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah. Anyway. I think like when you were just talking about that example, it took me back to a youth group. I mean, it was back last year now, um, where we took a lesson and just picked a psalm at random. Had the kids just shout out a number, and we picked the psalm, and just asked the like the first question we asked as we read through it was like. What what am I learning about God? What what is what is the psalmist or what is it like the author of Scripture saying about God in this passage? And just doing that, I actually heard from one of the parents. It was like that was one of the best, and it was like a, an off the cuff, filling the gap kind of lesson. Um, but just asking that question of what is this passage like when we're doing our morning Scripture reading, right? Like it's very easy to plow through it, check the boxes on the plan, and move forward with your day. But just, all right, what, what is Scripture revealing about God this morning? Like, just with the four passages, the five passages you're in, like, that's the question, I think, in order to meditate on God, to be asking ourselves and to keep it from becoming just a rote, I'm going through the motion of reading Scripture, right? Yeah. To actually, <clears throat> like, think about and utilize to guide your thoughts for the day. Yeah, you think about, I sent a text out to uh, men in my life, mm-hmm. the men of God, text i sent it on monday from psalm 103 and like there was just verses in here that resonated that just caught my attention so i sent it out to all these men but he's like um he the lord does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities like praise god (laughs) just stop and think of that Mm -hmm. and on your drive to work, think about all of your iniquities. And as you're reminded of each one, stop. God, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for not dealing me, dealing with me in accordance to that. Thank, you know, it's just rehearsing and reminding truths and thinking about it, So, And th- this is great advice to people who even aren't suffering right now because envy is like, envy is one of those things that can live in your heart regardless of whether you're going mm-hmm. through trials right now or not. And especially in our culture, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, yeah. it's a very easy trap to fall into. Yeah. Yeah. I think any, you know, as I think what we're going to find with dealing with any of these traps, these escapes come back to our spiritual disciplines and disciplining our lives when we don't have that overwhelming trouble. Yeah. And we so that we carry those disciplines into those troubles. So, yeah. yeah, it's not some like revolutionary answer to each one of these. Yeah, like it kind of comes back, like you said, to the same things, and like maybe that's not what you're hoping to hear, but it's what you need to hear. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about the escape, we're we're talking about uh, meditation on God, who He is, these gracious saving benefits that He's giving us, um, chewing on the cut of Scripture. Mm-hmm delicious <laughs> is there anything else you guys would want to add to that as far as the escape yeah kind of the escaping that envy trap uh, i have something i don't know if you do i've I, done a little bit of talking go ahead you can okay so the f- one of the things that came to my mind was just um he brought up the point in the, in the book about that like the biblical story has a perfect beginning a dark and painful middle and a glorious end and like we're in that dark and painful middle and so it's having a recognition that what is our experience currently will not be our ultimate experience. Like Mm -hmm. there is a direction we're going. So whatever seems so big today or whatever is causing you to be envious today will be just a moment, a blip um, in the past as time, as we move on to into eternity. Like it's, um, 
it's not as it seems huge now, but that's because you have a very uh, minute focus of time versus thinking like of eternity. Yeah. Yeah. When you're envious and when you're horizontal, you're looking at, well, their trouble's not as hard and their comforts I deserve. Yeah. You're, you're not realizing the truth about those comforts. Yeah. Is that those comforts also are temporary, they're mm-hmm. impermanent. And so, in the midst of my trial and my trouble right now, and I'm longing for comfort, I, I need to be reminded that even that comfort is temporary. Mm-hmm. And envy tends to distort that. Envy is longing for a relief and a comfort with the sense that that'll be permanent. And it's also looking at others and their comforts and their blessings, and it's saying, well, those are eternal. You know, it's like, no, that's it's temporary for them. It's, um, And then the other escape to maybe add on to that is, you know, envy is, along with that timeline, that arc that Ryan was mentioning, it's, it's forgetting about the eternal. So envy is forgetting about eternity, um, which is what will always be. Envy func- like functions without a future, almost in a way. Yeah. And so the escape from this trap is factoring in eternity into your equation. You know, a thousand years into eternity, we will look back at the present difficulty. So, you know, we believe in the rapture, at least I do. Rapture happens, we're in eternity, or Jesus comes back and we step into eternity. He's made all things new. And, and it's everything, there's no sin, anything. Like a thousand years into that, we will look back at the present trouble as just a tiny little blip and eternity is going to totally overwhelm and outweigh that. And I think that's what Paul gets getting at in second Corinthians four, 16, 18 is that the overwhelming glory of eternity will outweigh the temporary present difficulties. Mm -hmm. It takes me back to your sermon last Sunday with, with Hevel Mm -hmm. life is Hevel. It's, it's this smoke, it's this vapor. Yeah, and that's that vertical look. We, mm-hmm. do, we, we need to be reminded. We need to factor eternity. And envy is like the enemy of hope, and it doesn't – envy closes the window. It puts you in the basement, and you don't see beyond. Envy is like trapped you in the now, and we need to be re- reminded of eternity and um, factor in, and that's when we start doing the good spiritual math. Yeah. Like Paul Tripp, I had a quote written down. He says, Eternity tells you that you aren't cursed with less, but guaranteed gloriously more than anything you look around and envy in this present world. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. Amen. So good. That's a good way to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, that picture of focusing on eternity. I think about Romans 8, where Paul talks about you've been called, you've been justified, you've been sanctified, and you've been glorified. And he, he speaks of it as in the past tense because it's mm-hmm. so sure to happen. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But awesome, guys. Well, this has been uh, very uplifting to me. I hope it's been uplifting and equipping, equipping to the listeners. Uh, today we've talked about the envy trap, and we're going to continue on talking about suffering in the episodes to come. Yes, sir. we got three more, right? Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.